What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Planners and Wine. My name is Meg. And I am Myra. Welcome back to another week. Yes, and today we are joined by our Patreon crew for our April live episode. What's up, Patreon crew? So happy y'all are in the building with us. Yay, it's always fun to have them here, mm-hmm. and I'm glad we got to do it before um, we leave for Go Wild. So yep. this is going to be a fun show. I think so, too. This is our last regular episode before Go Wild, and I just cannot believe how close we are. But we're going to talk about Go Wild in a little bit because mm-hmm. it's hard for me to contain my excitement. We're so close. But um, yeah, how's everybody doing? How has everybody been this week? Myra, how have you been this week? Yeah, I, I've been, well, it's been a struggle because I've been a single mom who works two jobs this week. <laughs> <laughs> Because Chuck has some jury duty and it was spring break oh and gosh. it was really, really cold. I usually like, well, not usually. This is the first spring break technically, but when he has like these extended periods away from school or daycare, I try to do stuff outside and go mm-hmm. places. It's cold. It was so cold. It snowed this past week. No way. You didn't yeah. tell me that it snowed. And it oh rained really, really hard. So yeah, um, we were mostly in the house. So that was very, very interesting this week. Mm-hmm. But um but we had Beyonce to keep us through. We did. We did. And we're going to talk about Cowboy Carter because this is the first recording we've had to be able to talk about it also. So cannot wait to do that. Um, but yeah, this week has been so good. Just getting some last minute stuff for a while. I just told everybody off um, air that I just made my final Amazon purchase. I have made feel like I've made a million over the last month. And if you're going to go wild, do not feel like oh, you need to be doing this, you need to be doing that, like you haven't done enough. We're just extra. So that's why. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I like, love that you, you've admitted that because I'm definitely yeah, extra. <laughs> exactly. Like there's nothing else that y'all need to be doing. I promise. I promise. Here's the thing. I feel like especially over the past like year or two, we have traveled together so many times that I feel like I have like traveling down to like a science and I know exactly what I need to optimize it and make it the most comfortable you Mm -hmm. know situation possible for myself because I hate traveling so I need to do all these things to make traveling just more comfortable for myself you know what I'm saying to enjoy it more so I'm literally trying to think of like all the things that I could possibly like need to to like I said make this travel experience the absolute best I love being new places I just hate the process of getting there I hate flying um, you know, sleeping in a hotel, it, it's hard for me sometimes. So I just do all this stuff to like make it as comfortable as possible. And I feel like I've done that. I feel like I've checked out my boxes. So if something comes up and I don't have it, I'm gonna be pissed because I feel like I've done everything <laughs> to make this good. Uh, yeah. And now this is being like our third, um, like big event, like go mm-hmm. wild like this. Um, you kind of just learn what you need. Yes, specifically for Go Wild. Mm-hmm. That's totally, it's totally different. true. Yeah. yeah, and obviously you can always buy stuff when you get there. I mean, every city we go to has a Target, has a Walmart, mm-hmm. has places where you can get the essentials or whatever. But I definitely just like to be as prepared as possible. So getting all the little things. And then it's just kind of fun. It just gives you like a fun little rush, like buying stuff for your trip. So I'm definitely looking forward um, to that. Um, but yeah. Patreon crew, how have y'all been doing? Jeanette said in the chat, not snowing in April. Girl, snowing in April. Ohio does not care, clearly. clearly. Ohio is the second most unserious city, well, state. What's <laughs> in <first>? Georgia. Because oh. Atlanta is in it. <laughs> oh, specifically for the weather, it's always crazy. Yeah. Like that, a- snowing in April is like kind of the norm. Yeah. Like that first week of April, it mm-hmm. like, we get a little bit of warmth like mid to end of March. Mm-hmm. And that first week of April is just like, nah, it's winter. You know it's what? Normal. Spring is not fighting back the way it needs to because we had a little cold front this week also. Yeah, and spring being too soft. 
I know, exactly. And I had one day, I was totally Delulu. So I have been looking up the weather um, in Dallas to see if I could see on my weather app, like how the weather was going to be during the week ago. Wow. Um, and I forgot. So then the next morning, I always look at the weather to make sure I'm dressed appropriately, make sure Mason's dressed appropriately, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I saw that the high was going to be 80. I was like, oh my God, it's going to be such a warm day today. This is amazing. It's going to warm up later. <laughs> in a different state. In a different state. <laughs> in a different state. I was Delulu all day and I didn't even realize until like later on in the day like probably in the afternoon because I had told Dallas it was going to be like 80 degrees and I was like yeah it never warmed up I was like the weather thing has never been that crazy and wrong before and then I get on to look at it again and I was definitely still in Dallas so <laughs> I was sucks. just for that no reason sucks. all day I was like I thought it was warming up I had even told people at work I was like yeah, it's supposed to warm up I didn't say 80 degrees but I did I was like it's supposed to warm up just loud and wrong <laughs> just loud <laughs> and that's how the Lulu I was for the weather to be nice again I mean it relatable me. we're, it we're exhausted and tired like so tired. We're ready for it to be warm Winter just never wants to go away. I feel like when you live in like uh, like in Tennessee, for example, it's, it's warm for so much of the year. And then when it's finally winter, it's such a relief because mm -hmm. I feel like we still probably had nice weather until like mid November or something like that. Um, and even in like early December, it wasn't like crazy cold or anything. Yeah. It doesn't really get like cold, cold to like January. But then like the winter never wants to go away. And then you'll think it's gone and then it'll sneak on back and... Yeah, Zero and with, with the um, time change and everything and the sun being out a lot longer, like it makes mm -hmm. you feel like it's warm. It's, You're it's supposed, supposed to be, be out warm. there, but mm -hmm. no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Exactly, exactly. Amanda said in the chat, fall spring is stupid. Fall spring is definitely stupid, okay? Like we need mm -hmm. it to be real spring. And it's warming up, but for all I know, I can still be in Dallas. So don't listen to me, y'all. <laughs> do not listen to me i am excited although this will pass by the time most of y'all are hearing this i'm super excited for the solar eclipse tomorrow i am too i am too my job That's gave us fun. those little glasses so we can go outside and look at it and, and mason's teacher has been talking to them about keeping on the glasses mm -hmm. and looking <laughs> I'm like, oh my god! I've been talking to Ash about that too. Exactly, yeah. I've been reiterating that to her too. Like, girl, and I'm like, I'm because she wears glasses now too, and I'm like, not mm -hmm. your glasses, the Eclipse special, yeah, sunglasses. Like, keep them babies on, please. The whole time, I know they say it's safe when it's totally Eclipse for those three mm -hmm. minutes, but no, nah, we keeping them on, bro. And even with care. hours, <laughs> I think hours is like. About ninety percent totality here. I also saw ninety nine percent totality. I did not see it one hundred percent totality here anywhere. So keep them on. Yeah, keep the whole on. time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it is exciting. It is really exciting. Um, if y'all have not done so already, make sure you leave us a five star review. Um, on Apple Podcasts, we really appreciate it, and it definitely helps the podcast. Um, you know, share the pod with your friends. Let them know how much you love it. Um, our merch is still available. It's going to mm -hmm. be available for the foreseeable future. We don't have any plans of taking it down, and maybe in a few months we'll put up some new stuff. Um, as well and it's been doing really well and we really really appreciate y'all support especially on our collab shirt that we have with Danny we are going to donate 100% of the proceeds from that shirt um, mm -hmm. at the end of April um, so thank y'all so much for supporting um, if y'all are in this chat right now it's probably not too late to order for Go Wild but you're cutting it very close if you're listening to this episode it's too late <laughs> but you can still just order it and we appreciate it nonetheless. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, hope, Jeanette, hopefully, if you order by two, oh, I'm sorry, 329, you should get it. It's been yeah. taking most people about a week. Yeah. About a week uh, to get it. So you should be good for yeah. it to arrive. We obviously just can't make any guarantees because we mm -hmm. aren't the people fulfilling it. But yeah, for 329, yeah. you should be fine. I would think you'll be getting it probably sometime this upcoming uh week. Mm -hmm. Oh perfect. And shout out to you for ordering it on uh B Hall Day. Period. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But yeah, and also check out the YouTube channel. Um, I know mm -hmm. a lot of folks are really loving, like we've been breaking down the episode. So if you only got 
10, 15 minutes and just want to look at one topic, mm -hmm. um, there will be having a few of the topics. And then also the full episode is going up on YouTube as well. So please yes. hop over there. Link is in the description in our bio, wherever. Just search Planners of Wine on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Subscribe to there because we definitely want to grow that place as well. Exactly. Exactly. But yeah, y'all, we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to get into the episode. So we will be right back. All right, y'all. So we are back. And the first thing we have to dive into is Go Wild. Shout out to the Wild team, Wild for Planners, for sponsoring this episode. We are so excited. This is the last episode before Go Wild. And I don't know. I guess I just kind of wanted to talk about maybe what are some of the things that we are looking forward to um, at this year's Go Wild. Chat, make sure y'all chime in um, so we can share your responses too. But Myra, what's something that you're really looking forward to this Go Wild? Um, I am actually looking forward to seeing how this planner fair is going to pan out. Okay. Um, just because it's new, just curious. And yeah. also because it's new is the, uh, welcome party sponsored by Archer and Olive. Yes. Shout out to Bonnie. Y'all yes. may or may not hear from her here soon, Woo. but, um, I'm, I'm really excited. I, I know they are really going to give us the a welcome party we deserve and I, i'm just i'm pumped i'm kind of excited just for the dual pianos yeah, yeah i i'm with you the welcome party is always something i look forward to because it really does like truly kick off mm -hmm. um the weekend and it's going to be really cool to see it be you know different than it's ever been and just really change it up so i'm super super excited about that um i'm excited about the live podcast this is going to mm -hmm. be our first like official live recording of for sure. the podcast yeah so i'm really excited about that um hopefully i think information about that and everything is going to come out super super soon um i know you can go ahead and download the go wild dallas app it is available on the app store but i as as we're recording this, it hasn't really been updated with anything like in particular for this go out besides like general information. But I know like signups and stuff like that are going to come officially through that chat as far as I have heard. So I'm excited about that. Um, I'm really what else am I really excited about? I'm really excited about um, Martha freaking Stewart. That's going to be so cool to hear from her. Um, and to see so many people that we love, so many of our friends and relationships that we've made throughout the years in this community, and just to get together and go out is just such a happy event. So I'm just excited about the excitement that's going to be in the room. Excited know? for the excitement. Yes. I am. Yes, I am. exciting. <laughs> Yes. Veronica said that she is excited for the planner fair too, since it's new for her. Um, Jeanette said, um, the content will come later for the week for the app. Okay, thank you for that. Yeah, and so probably by most time, most of y'all. By the time y'all hear this, there. it might yeah. be in there. Yeah. Um, Jeanette's also excited about Martha and the podcast and seeing all my friends. Um, yes, Amanda said, I want to be in the room where it happens. Girl, and this is the <laughs> room where it happens for real. Period. I cannot wait. Um, yes. I just feel like we just spend so much time like anticipating it and looking forward to it. And I just cannot wait to just be there with our people again. It's going to be so fun. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. I just was downloading the app. So I, I'm <laughs> at least all set up. I turned on my notifications. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully I will be notified once everything is um, updated and more content is on there. So yeah, the app is a, a really cool um you know, part of Go Wild too. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure like we had to be a little bit interactive at DC. So I'm looking forward to how that is going to um, elevate the experience in Dallas. That's true. That's true. I love the app. And I think especially for, you know, since some people are not on Facebook, but they still attend Go Wild, the app is great to kind of bridge the gap and just bring everybody who's attending in one place. Because mm -hmm. I saw people talking about, hey, we're going to this place at six o'clock. Who wants to come join us? Like, it's such a good way to like network and talk to people, find out where people are going to be. Like, 
put in there, hey, we're planning in a lobby or whatever, who wants to come down? Like you see that type of stuff in the app a lot. So definitely, definitely utilize the app if you're going to be at Go Wild because it's just, it's just the source of everything. You just really get all the information that you need. Like last year, I think they had like a map of the hotel or something like that maybe in there like something like they had a lot of stuff so i'm sure this year is going to be the same thing it's super helpful yeah for sure for sure um how did you like the box we both officially got um yeah is it, i hate to just call it the box but you know is the it a welcome, welcome box or the welcome box <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the welcome box is so cute. I feel like it had a lot of a lot, even more stuff in it this year than it did last year. Yeah, washi tape, stickers. Obviously, you get your badge and your lanyard. Um, it's really, really cute. I love, love, love mm -hmm. the box. Super excited to get the box. Um, and then if you want to participate in post secret, it came with a little postcard to be able to do that. Um, so yeah, I love the box. I think it's super cute. What did you think of the box? I've got some like yeah. pins in there also. Yeah, yeah, I did enjoy the box. Um, I am loving these boxes here because it's now been a way for me to keep, like you know, the keepsake yeah. that I get from mm -hmm. the wild. I can put in that box and you can kind of display it a little bit because mm -hmm. it does have Dallas. I don't know if DC had like DC on like the spine of it, but this one did have Dallas. I can't yeah. remember if it did or not. I but, can't remember uh, if it did yeah. either. I think it probably did, but I can't remember. Yeah. But, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's a, a cute little, little keepsake box. Yeah, I love it. And it, it's it's nice to get that because it just gets you. I mean, we all love Happy Mail, mm -hmm. but um, it gets you like, okay, it's really weird. real yep. now. It Although does. I, have to, uh, I have to cover my uh, at name and put the, the new one on it. Because <laughs> obviously I got my ticket way before I made the change, mm -hmm. but it's fine. Yep. It's now fine. mine's is unique. There we go. Unique? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> And you know what? Because I think it was a question in the um, Go Wild group. Somebody had asked about, um, I think their preferred name is not what ended up on the, the badge. I think maybe they might have filled out the application thing wrong because it does have a part where it asks for your preferred name. Mm -hmm. um, and they said, the Go Wild team responded and said, it's totally fine to cover up your name to put your preferred name as long as the QR code is visible. Just do not cover up your QR code. So okay, yeah, and that is different yeah. from last year. Last year, so I looked at the badge from last year. Last year's did not have a QR code. So, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The the QR codes on the back. Um, mm -hmm. so you you should be fine to cover mm -hmm. up your preferred name. Um, yep. I did wish it didn't have my full last name, but I mean, I if you dig hard enough, you can find it. So it's not That's that true. big of a deal. But I, mm -hmm. you know. I, government I initial yeah <laughs> yeah i just feel like i think yeah i think the initial definitely would have just been okay but you know i think they didn't just do first names because it, you know it's a million megans in the planet it, community it's, yeah um <laughs> it's a million in the patreon alone. exactly <laughs> <laughs> so i mean that makes sense mm -hmm. but yeah i'm excited it's just so much to look forward to and it's going to be a blast veronica asks uh this is my first box did y'all have those for california we did not so i believe dc was the first year mm -hmm. that they did the badge boxes and sent out the boxes beforehand and i really love it like you said it really is just a nice touch you have a little keepsake box and it really just gets you excited for the event so and it's cute it's so adorable it's very very cute it's very <laughs> cute and i forgot to mention plum paper put in there like a little like planner conference notebook and it has like specific pages to where it asks like you know conference speaker mm -hmm. notes on speaker all this type of stuff i love that i think that is so handy i'm definitely gonna have mine on me um and yeah it's gonna be good i love yeah. this box I was like, plum paper, y'all could have told us you was doing this. Because now I got two notebooks and I have to decide which cute notebook I'm going to take. There we go. The Just struggle. bring them both. Bring them both. <laughs> but at go. least the bigger notebook does have a pocket in the back. I can that's fit true. that little one in there. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. Um, Crystal said it also helps with the line at registration. Yes, it absolutely, absolutely. does. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Just have your badge on wherever you go and you're good to go. But yeah. Oh, I cannot wait to see y'all. I'm so, so excited. Um, I believe our, no, we're not, we're doing the Facebook Live and the bonus episode at the end of the month. So we'll be mm -hmm. able to talk to each other, talk to everybody about um, how they felt about Go Wow, how it went, all the good things. So I'm really, really excited to be able to recap it, but we're, we're going to be there very, very soon. 
Yes, very soon. I uh, yeah, yeah, I cannot wait. In the meantime, we gotta talk about Cowboy Car. <laughs> because the Queen did not come to play. She came to slay once again. Cowboy Carter has released since the last time we recorded a regular episode. And we got to talk about our thoughts, our first impressions, our favorite songs, like all the things. So Patreon crew, make sure y'all chime in. But Myra, how are you feeling about Cowboy Carter a weekend? What an experience. I I keep having this, uh, I don't know if y'all seen this TikTok, the girl's like, I don't give a piss about nothing but the high, baby. That's that's how, that's I, how feel. I feel. That's how I feel. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's so good. It's such an experience. Um, I it's on repeat. I'm mm-hmm. stuck on it. Mm-hmm. I I I don't know when the choke code is going to be released. Um, I also like seeing uh, a lot of people I've been sharing, like, why do I talk about uh, last summer so much and because it sounded like this like the concert I'm like oh. <laughs> look <laughs> when I tell you the last two years have been such an amazing time to be a Beyonce fan uh, it's been like, so good it's just been blessing after blessing yeah. after blessing from the queen like Cowboy Carter just just blew me away it just knocked my socks off I love it there are so many songs that are like in my top five all-time favorite Beyonce songs Mm -hmm. now. And it just came out a week ago. Like, the way that Beyonce, like, she's truly in a league of her own. She just continuously outdoes herself. She is her only competition. Like, I truly, truly believe that. Like It's her own genre. Yes, and her way that she has been able to not only uplift herself, a Black woman, into that country music space, but uplift other Black artists in the country music space through this album in this era, absolutely amazing. It's, uh, I'm just obsessed. I'm obsessed with that lady. I love I, her. Same. I just, I, I just her. don't get it. I, I can see if you don't care for the music or don't like the music, but I just don't get how you cannot see the impact and the effect that she has. Mm-hmm. It's deeper than music. Yeah, it's deeper it, than music. It really, and she knows that, and she you know, uses her effect wisely. Mm-hmm. Like everything, she she doesn't do anything for the hell of it. Everything yeah. has a reason in behind it. Even if you don't care for the music, like I just don't understand how people could not see that part of it. Yeah. Well, you know, I think for a certain certain demographics. It's racism. Obviously, yeah, not obviously not everybody in that demographic, but the loudest people in that demographic, I definitely think that it, a lot of it is racism. And a lot of those people really liked Beyonce when she was just a very sanitized, neutral R&B pop artist. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, soon this formation came out and they realized that, yeah, Beyonce actually is Black. Um, and it was, and it's <laughs> obviously she had always been embracing her blackness, but the mm-hmm. way that she publicly embraced it through the visuals, through the music, and all of that that's when the tides started turning as far as they were concerned with Beyonce. But, mm-hmm. like, for me, that like that has just doubled down, tripled down, quadrupled my love and just admiration for Beyonce. And the fact that she is so black, she is so proud. She does, she loves our culture, embraces our culture, you know, puts pressure on the powers that be to embrace our culture as well. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, I just love it. It's the impact for me. Like, it's deeper than music. Like you said, even if you don't, if it's not your personal favorite style of music, I don't see how anybody can deny the talent, the impact on the culture, the artistry, the singing abilities. Like, the performance, like she's just amazing, and Cowboy Carter is amazing. Um, it really is, yeah. The it's, chat's going crazy about Cowboy. Yeah, Carter. <laughs> it's just easy. It's easy to relate to her as a black woman too, because I mean, mm-hmm. regardless, like it, you don't even have to be in the music space. Just existing, you understand, like yeah. the pressure that is put on her, the backlash that is put on her, the mm-hmm. like you can't do this kind of thing, and having to push through that. What you know. Mm-hmm. It's, it's that part is just re- relatable and when you see it in real time it's like it make you want to stand harder because mm-hmm. it's like I get you I get you yeah exactly exactly um Crystal said amazing from top to bottom 
Um, Veronica said, yep, every single song. Jeanette said, I'm loving Cowboy Carter on repeat. She's giving the people history lessons and the ones who get it, get it. Exactly. The ones, that's yeah. why I tried a long time ago. I'm not arguing with people who don't understand Beyonce because I can't, I don't know how to make it make sense to you if you don't get it. Like I said, even You're if it's not your taste, you at this point. if you yeah. can't acknowledge the greatness, like, it's nothing for us to talk about and I just really don't trust you. So... <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's no more proven how great of an artist she is. Like, that's mm -hmm. not up for debate. At this point, it's just a fact. It's just a fact. It's just a fact. Yeah, it is factual. Yep. Uh, Crystal said, it's such a solid body of work that if them awards people don't give recognition, it's pure bias. I mean, yeah. And it, I feel like it always has been. And it's like, for people to think that once people reach a, a certain like socioeconomic status that they are not affected by racism and white supremacy anymore that is false obviously they're mm -hmm. not affected in the same way that you know people of a lower socioeconomic status are affected but they're still affected like it's still true that beyonce has to be twice as good to get half as much as her counterparts in the industry that's clearly true. clearly, clearly. <laughs> exactly <laughs> like it's still true so um you know we just the, the, if the Grammys want to play games again next year, then they're just going to further solidify how irrelevant they are. And I hate that for them. But if that's what they want to do, then that's what they want to do. So, yeah, we're not I mean, worried about it's it. It's their choice now. I mean, mm -hmm. Miss Miss Torture Vocals is coming up. So they're going to be in the same. It's called the, to the what Torture is it called? Poets Department, not Torture Vocals. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that was no that shade was really, that was actually but... that was not meant to be shady because you know what you, oh i can touch you. i love taylor swift i really like her music i'm excited about this album it's not i know it's not going to hit the same for me as cowboy carter because it doesn't have the history and that mm -hmm. makes it different you know what i'm saying so yeah if that'll you know, I feel like Cowboy Carter is going to be very hard for anything to top it as my personal album of the year. And I hope that the awards people in the powers of B are able to recognize the impact. It's, it's deeper than the music. The music is fantastic. The best music she's ever made. But it's a lot deeper than the mm -hmm. music. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. Mm. We're going to see. We gonna see. Yeah, we, we definitely will see. Um People gonna be upset regardless, but mm -hmm. hey, at this point, Grammys are obsolete to me because yeah, the math just do not be math. And how she has the most Grammys ever, but no, but album no of album of the year. year. Mm -hmm. The math is just not math, and so y'all, y'all completely obsolete. Yep, I agree. I agree. Amanda said, as soon as she spoke her mind, they wanted her to shut up. Representation matters. Exactly. They were perfectly happy with Beyonce as long as, like I said, she was just the. Very sanitized, very in line, you know, R&B pop artist. Hell, if she had stayed to that, she might have already won album of the year at this point because they were, she was giving them what they wanted. But as soon as she started doing what she wanted to do, that's when it was a problem. So. For sure. She's having people think, you know, mm -hmm. about everything that she has to go through as a black woman and right. they don't want to have to think about that. No, they do not. Uh, Lisa said, I barely have the energy for things I enjoy. I can't imagine doing all the things people are doing for the things they don't enjoy. Let people enjoy. And that's, that's the tweet. The <laughs> Let like, people I'm, enjoy things. I have seen nobody understand. ask nobody, <laughs> do you like Beyonce? If somebody asks nobody. you that, you are free to say that. Nobody has asked that, but yet people are volunteer that. I even saw one of our friends asked, what's your favorite song on Cowboy Carter? And somebody commented, none. Why? Why was that? Clearly you haven't even listened to the music if that's really your answer. And why even volunteer that? If you don't have anything to add to the conversation, conversation but negativity. It wasn't for you. It was not for you. Oh my <laughs> gosh. People just break their back. Yeah, it, just it makes no ridiculous. sense. It, it makes no sense. And I don't care. It, it's giving a little bit tinge of racism if you feel like you got to go out of your way or anti blackness, whatever, of your way. to give your opinion on something. Like that question, like mm -hmm. you just said, if you didn't care for the album or if you didn't listen to it, why? You keep, keep scrolling. scrolling. 
Scrooge, you keep scrolling. See stuff I don't agree with all the time on social media. I usually I'll either put not interested or I just scroll past it. If it's something really egregious, I just block the person. Mm -hmm. It really takes a lot for me to go out of my way to come in on something that I have an issue with that has nothing to do with me. And I'm not saying that there's not room for like criticism and stuff, but if people are celebrating something and pe and other people see the good and the fun and the excitement in it and you don't keep scrolling, it's right there. I, yeah. It's wild. I, yeah. I'm with Lisa. I just, I just don't have the time. Like mm -hmm. I'm not big on Tay Tay's music. I don't mm -hmm. see because the way algorithms work, if I don't interact with it, they stop mm -hmm. showing it to me. That's so if true. you don't want to see it and you don't care about it, my kids here, sorry. I just have to think off. If you don't want to see it, you don't care about it, you don't interact with it. And you see less and less and less you of see it. Less and less. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And you like literally, how many times have I talked about Taylor Swift? Myra has never one time been like, uh, oh, I don't like her. Oh, she not for me. Oh, her music sucks. Blah blah. Because there's no reason to do that. Let people enjoy things. You don't have to enjoy everything. I feel like people think it's a flex to be a hater or a devil's yeah. advocate. And it's really not. It's not. It's really it's not. not. A flex. Yeah. Mm, it is not a flex at all. It you you look dumb. Mm -hmm. You look dumb. And of course, there's people, and I think for me, like some people just don't even care. They just want the clicks and views. Because mm -hmm. you signal a certain demographic. Obviously, you signal the people who want to defend Beyonce, but you also signal the people who are hateful and, like you said, want to have that flex of being on the other side of things. Mm -hmm. Is that the people you want? Like, is I is that worth it to you? That's the community you want to build around yourself. That's I crazy. I know. Or also, like, what about the people who? No, they don't like Beyonce's music, have never liked Beyonce's music. Go out of their way just to listen to an album just to hate on it. Why? Y'all don't have nothing better else to do. I mean, it works for us. Get her streams up. Well, that's true. But we don't want to hear from you. Keep your TikToks <laughs> and your threads to yourself, though. <laughs> that's what I get the issue with it, okay? Because, like, it was this one girl, and she ended up going viral for saying that Blackbird that was boring. When you know the history, and she even said in the comments, she don't care. She about knows it. the history. She knows the context. She does not care. That makes you ignorant, then. Like you're just ignorant because how can you know the history? Know the and there was even this man on threads who responded to Paul McCartney, the writer of Blackbird, saying that um, Blackbird to me it wasn't really about racism. The writer of the song said that it was about racism, and you are arguing with him. <laughs> Y'all don't even be hearing yourselves. You sound dumb. And I get like art is art. Like once you put it out to the world, it's up to anybody's interpretation or whatever. But he's literally telling you, telling you what he wrote this about. And you're telling him that's not right. That's not right. Even though he wrote it. You could choke. L no, literally. Literally. So yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I love the discourse that has come out of this album because it, it, the the races are really showing themselves, and they always do. It, it, Y'all not even not, not even trying to hide it. It's just really really sad. Also, um, the discourse around Jolene. Did you see that article the guy made? Like it was so violent, and then come to find out, like Dolly rewrote it. Well, here's the thing: using the words "violent" to describe a black person. It's just, it, I mean, you can't even get more of a microaggression. It is. Than it that. is. It's a macro. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. <laughs> it's insane. It's actually, actually insane. And yeah, I have seen a lot of discourse about that song, um, in particular, which one? I love the original Jolene. I love Miley Cyrus's Jolene. And guess what? Mm -hmm. I love Beyonce's Jolene. Jolene is a fantastic song, and it's really hard to fuck it up. And y'all not finna sit up here and tell me that Beyonce did. No, she did not. <laughs> No, she did not. Okay, it's a great song. Dolly loves it, and that's the thing. Y'all arguing with the people who are the creators of this music, arguing with Dolly, Dolly Parton. I mean, arguing with Nancy Sinatra, and she. And it's like these are people who are co-signing this and giving her stamp of approval, and y'all still got something to say to them. Like, so that means y'all just aren't listening. Y'all just aren't. Y'all just want to be mad. Yeah, you just want to be mad. Yeah. yeah, you're fighting for people who don't need you to fight for them because they good. 
Yeah, I mean, Dolly has said for years she wanted Beyonce to do that. She did. That was on the album. Do you really think she's upset she's about on the what? album with her super cute little voice? I love uh, it. I love it. I wish I, I could uh, sound like her. Please, please don't try. I, I'm not <laughs> it going. reminds me of how on on the read how Kim Fury and Crystal are always doing like when Crystal does like a Jamaican accent. Oh my god, it's horrible. Kim Fury just pauses. <laughs> that would be me if you did a, a super southern accent. I like. Myra, keep it up north. <laughs> keep it in the north. It's so adorable. It's so adorable. It's so like, cute. oh, little Dolly. And she's so tiny, too. Oh, she's so cute. Um, Lisa <laughs> said, the confidence of a middle-aged white man, I need one-fourth of it. Girl, just one-fourth. Just one-fourth because the audacity is wild. It's so wild. It's I always so say, wild. like, when, when you apply for a job, apply as a straight white man. I mean, truly. truly. So you get all the confidence in the world if you do that. <laughs> Oh my gosh. But yeah, I, I really, really love this album. All the artists that are featured on this album are so amazing, so talented. People I didn't even, some of these people I didn't even know about mm -hmm. until, you know, Texas Hold'em and 16 Carriages came out. Like, because that just started this just chain reaction of all these Black country artists popping up on my TikTok for you page. And then, mm -hmm. then to see that they're on the album. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, it was just so meaningful. And then to go to their pages and to see how much it meant to them to be on the album, how this has increased their streams mm -hmm. by like so much. And it's just like the impact is just crazy. It is crazy. So it's more, it's more than just this amazing body of work. It's just so much else. It's the history, it's the uplifting of other artists right now. Um, it's reclaiming a part of our history, a genre that we helped build, that we have been, you know, pushed out of. It's just mm -hmm. so much, so much. This woman thinks of everything. I, I uh, follow, if a good follow is Little Debbie. She deeps dive into like all this stuff around Beyonce's music. But the horse that she is sitting on, the white horse on the album cover, is like this rare breed of horse that mm -hmm. actually is born black i heard that yeah and, then it and as it grows it turns mm -hmm. white which is like just what happened with country music mm -hmm. this lady thinks of every fucking thing she's very smart mm -hmm. like yeah, stop playing in her face <laughs> even the, the the visuals of the costumes on mm -hmm. the album cover and stuff you know reaching back to like black rodeos and things like that like yeah she thinks don't, of everything. Don't fuck with Beyonce. Yeah. Mm -mm. That's the tweet. Just don't fuck with Beyonce. <laughs> like, because you can't. You really can't. Um, so what is everybody's favorite or a couple of favorite songs on this album? I know it's very hard to choose, but if you had somebody come to you and be like, Myra, what is one song or one or two songs on Cowboy Carter that I have to listen to? This is the last music I'll be able to listen to ever before I die. Which two songs on Cowboy Carter? Should it be? <laughs> <laughs> the stakes are high. Oh, the, stakes the stakes are really are high. high. <laughs> um, it just really depends on the day. I feel like every day is something different. Right now, is they really last day? Is they last day? Last Myra, day. On their last day. <laughs> Damn. I I say I would say spaghetti. Okay. And also bodyguard. Okay. Yes. Your yes. last day. Your last day. Damn. Can I, I get one more? One more. So do three. Um. Uh, Spaghetti bodyguard. Mm. Damn. Only get one more. My Two just most wanted, one. man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard. It's so hard. Okay, I'm gonna try to pick different from you because I definitely would have picked bodyguard and two most wanted in my top three, but I'm gonna try to pick different. So I would pick um Levi's jeans. Uh, I would pick Yaya. And I will pick uh two hands to heaven. Those mm. are my those are my three. Yeah. Good, good. Those good. are my three. Yeah. So I good. Kept some my jeans. And now I'm like repaying bodyguard a lot. It just depends. It you just know? depends. depends on the day. Mm -hmm. You know what? I was on the read, they talked about it. And Crystal had mentioned one song on bodyguard that she could live without. And I cannot believe her answer was Levi's jeans. I'm like, Crystal, I'm questioning you so hard right now because I, I feel like it has something to do with post malone I, she seems like the type that don't really care for him you know it has some of the girls to. be like 
Yeah. He's a culture vulture kind of thing. Okay. Like, he that, doesn't even do be, anything. It has to be that because he sounded so good on that song. Mm-hmm. I love that song. It just has such a good feel to it. It does. Yeah. It's, it sounds so good. It sounds exactly. really, really good. But I, I think it's because it's Post Malone. If it was anybody else, people would love it. I think you're right. I think you're right. Um, Lisa said, Beyonce is out here uplifting new and old artists in all aspects. Musical, graphics, video, hair, makeup, etc. And J-Lo is fighting people over orange drink. <laughs> J-Lo, we want better for you, I promise. <laughs> we want better for you. Oh, man. J-Lo is what JoJo Siwa is doing right now. Like, I feel like mm. they both are trying really, really hard to trying be really hard. something. Not something that they're not, but trying to, like, I guess it's something that they're not be influential and be that yeah. next level. Yes. Yeah. And you know what? With with it's JoJo, I can get with it because she she's young still. I think she's just trying to do something new, you know, mm. but J-Lo girl. But I love J-Lo. Anyway, um, Jeanette said <laughs> that Yaya is her favorite. Obviously, yeah. that is such Yaya a good choice. So good. Veronica said too much wanted. Jeanette said too much wanted. It's top threes with uh, her and Miley. They sounded so good together. Miley so has a cute together. southern accent too, though. She does. She <laughs> does. And the fact that she's Dolly Parton's like goddaughter. Oh, mm. I just, I just love it. I just love it. But yeah, Cowboy Carter is such a fun album, such an amazing, meaningful album. Beyonce herself even called it her best music. Um, and I just cannot wait to just continue to listen to it and see what comes next. We got some, I don't know what's coming, but she made some website called, called bencountry.com. And it's been a lot of speculation over what that means. If it's going to be a tour, if it's going to be some type of visual or what. Um, and I see everybody is begging just like we are for Beyonce to wait on the tour because we ain't got it. But we're going to make it work. Don't have it, girl. <laughs> we don't have it. <laughs> Please. Please, it's we only been a work. year since the Renaissance tour. Like, mm-hmm. can we get a a, a year break to recruit mm-hmm. the Beyonce fun? We don't tell Beyonce when we're ready. She tells we're me. just <laughs> asking nicely. We're not really telling you, sis. We just ask it really nicely. You know, we're gonna come through regardless. We're going to come through, <laughs> but we're going. We just to come need through. we just need that little bit of break. Could you hit us hit us with the perfume, the hairline, a whole new album? She said merch from that album. It's then, giving world domination. Yeah. It's giving world domination. I see why y'all mad. Yeah, I get I it. Do I do too. Y'all face could never. Ooh. Cannot. Cannot. <laughs> okay. Next thing we got to talk about is this clip has been all over TikTok. Honey Boo Boo's mama spending pretty much all the money that she has made over the last decade, except for like a very small, comparatively like amount of it. Yeah, because that was regulated by the government. Otherwise, it would have all been gone. Yeah. It would all crazy. Well, apparently, apparently there are, I think California has very strong laws about child labor and things like that because of Hollywood. And unfortunately, most other states don't. And Mm. I think, I want to say they were in Georgia or something like that. I don't think that Georgia has as strict, if they're in Georgia, where they are, they don't have as strict of child labor laws as far as like putting money aside and stuff like that. So Mama June really was able to just, I mean, she was already taking a percentage of the money that Honey Boo Boo was bringing in as her like manager, Chris Jenner or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then a big majority of all of it, she was just using for their lives and their lifestyle and vacations and houses and things like that. And, um, it really sucks that there was nobody there to look out for a honey boo boo. Cause I'm trying my best not to be like too hard on Mama June because I feel like there was a huge lack of like understanding and like education about how to, you know, financial literacy. I definitely think was lacking, especially if you're somebody who had, does hadn't didn't come from a lot of money, and then all of a sudden you have a ton of money thrown into your lap. I don't know. I wish like the producers of the TLC shows or somebody could have been there to advocate for Honey Boo Boo and the rest of her kids to make sure that Mama June was doing the right thing. Definitely not trying to take all the responsibility away from her, but I can definitely see how there was like a gap in financial literacy, basically, you know, but it's really sad. She's made, Honey Boo Boo has probably made millions and I think there's like a hundred and something thousand in this like, you know, 
account account um left for her or whatever. So it's 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 yeah. tough. It's and she's trying to go to college. That's not enough to get her through. At least not the one she's trying to go to for sure. Yeah. But, I mean, when yeah. you've made millions of dollars through your whole childhood and you only got like a hundred K to show for it. That's, that's insane. And I don't blame her for being mad as hell about that at all. Because it's not Honey Boo Boo's fault that her mom did not have the financial literacy to do the right thing, but she's the one who's paying for it. And that's what is messed up about it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with Jeanette. TLC is garbage. Um, mm -hmm. it, yeah, I don't I don't really expect much from these um, programs, TV mm -hmm. networks type things, because honestly, they're not going to do anything. They probably only thing they probably did was what was required in the state what of Georgia. Required. Um, mm -hmm. And that's the bare minimum. So it it just has to be a little bit more. Uh, put in place like nationwide especially now with the rise of social media because when Honey Boo Boo and then was coming up like social media isn't what it is now so now you have like the family vloggers and stuff like that like there's no laws around that like those kids are working that is all work and it it just is going to take a government hand hammer down on all types of child labor in order for it to be much better like well, that's how it always is too and it's like it's it, because it like sucks. the laws are so reactive and they wait until something is a problem before mm -hmm. they do anything about it rather than getting in front of it so getting it's just like it, yeah. you know even with like child actors like a whole generation of child actors had to suffer and deal with this mm -hmm. exact same thing before anything was done about it in just california so for these other states to get on board now that there is like reality TV and they are filming things and more in like other states, like they have to do something to protect these kids, especially like I said, from like for like the social media stuff. I mean, we hope that parents and stuff are doing the right thing, but you just never parents know. are shitty humans too. They yeah, you would hope know. that because I mean, yeah, you may not have the financial literacy and now you have all this money, but also now you have the money to get the help to get the education yep. get the help to, for somebody because there was definitely a way for them to continue to have the nice cars the houses the vacations mm -hmm. and still put a decent amount of money for it. like it definitely was like she just was blowing through it tlc don't give a fuck because they ain't getting paid to they TLC not required to was not so there. it just mm -hmm. it's just sad and it's sad to see it in real time um her be like honey boo boo be so upset and realizing like damn i'm thinking and obviously her mom is telling her like she has all this money oh she yeah she blatantly lied yeah. about how much money yeah. she was putting putting aside for a long time that's devastating mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. that is devastating yeah it, it's, it's sad really and i think um i think that Mama June <clears throat> was spending the money like crazy because at the time there was so much money just coming in that even mm. if she was spending it crazy, it was still just so much coming in that it really didn't matter. And then when the money started slowing down and drying up, she didn't change those spending and living habits. I was in too deep. I mean, mm -hmm. if you're buying a house yep. and having a mortgage, thinking you're going to have X amount of income when you're at your peak. And I it mean, changes. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it changes. I, you would think that you would know that this isn't going to last forever no tv show lasts forever y'all really were lucky how long y'all lasted you honestly you would think <laughs> but, i'm surprised they are still on the air and yeah so that's, that's just, where these clips yeah. are coming from i thought it was long gone off the air or whatever i think he just came back or something um and Jeanette made a good point she said the whole 20 kids accounting dad didn't pay any of those kids even the grown ones girl that gagged me when I found that out that there were so many of his kids that were over 18 and TLC was just paying him and mm -hmm. they were just leaving it up to him to divvy it out to his family as he saw fit. And of course, he didn't get them kids nothing. Barely anything. Oh, that's sad. That's really sad. It's really sad. gross. It's really, really It always really, seems really, like really it's gross. the horrible human beings who get mm -hmm. these opportunities and basically fuck their kids over. I know.
You never I mean, hear about something good. Like, yeah, really for the most part. Between. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I, I definitely don't want to make it seem like there aren't any responsible parents who have been put in this situation, too. But it just seemed like the irresponsible ones are the ones that we hear about and get, mm -hmm. you know, in the situation gets blown up. And I mean, in this situation, they're literally talking about it on the show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so I don't I don't think that Mama June, I'm trying to give her the benefit of the doubt that she didn't have any bad intentions. But like you said, she was definitely in a position to where she had the resources to learn how to be more responsible or to pay people that were responsible to help take care of her family and her family's future. And she chose not to do that. And now they have this situation that is obviously going to cause a major rift in a family that already had some major rifts and stuff going on in it. So it's just very, very sad. Yeah. I it's hate very, that. very sad. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, hopefully Honey Boo Boo will figure it out. Um, and... Yeah. I do wish her the best. It's sad. I mean, honestly, that's all she can do. Yeah, is make the best out of the shitty situation. Obviously, she's mm -hmm. making some money from the show now since she's an adult. Yeah, and people were saying that um in the comments, and they were saying that Honey Boo Boo needs to like sue her mom and all this. One suing people takes money, also because you gotta pay lawyers and stuff. Um, two that is her mama. No, it one is it is her mom. But I'm, <laughs> Look, I'm not against people suing their parents if they if the situation calls for it. But mm -hmm. from a legal standpoint, you know, we're not lawyers or anything. But I don't know if Mama June did anything illegal. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, illegal. it sounds like she didn't. If she still has a good, well, not a good portion, like whatever the percentage yeah. is, I, it's really no recourse. Yeah, and then and also three, sue her for what? She ain't got no money. That's the whole problem. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Got it. every comment everything that happens on the internet if you go to the comments somebody's talking about you should sue it's not that simple it's, it's really not, not that simple it's, it's really not like not. making a new instagram account it is deeper than that it's, it really <laughs> is it really 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 is um lisa said uh then the kids go no contact when they are adults and the parents are like we're we never saw it coming please i can't imagine sacrificing my future relationship with my kids for money i know yeah I that's know. why we good people. <laughs> they <why> not. <laughs> money, money changes people. It's just it it's, does. It's really wild. I, mm -hmm. It's sad. Yeah. I hate that. Exactly. And Veronica said, right. And if the money is gone, what can you do? Sp spend more money trying to get money from her that she don't even have. That she doesn't have because we're had, talking it, millions. It to her. It's yeah. not like it's a couple grand. We're talking millions of dollars squandered over the past decade. I don't think Mama June is sitting on millions of dollars and just lying to her family still and going through all this drama. Um, I, I she probably got a little money. I don't think she got millions. I don't think she has millions. So yeah, probably not. Uh, yeah. And she also probably wouldn't be doing the show if she was set for life. But right, that's very true. <laughs> Um, okay, last thing yeah. I want to talk about quickly before we take a quick break is the first Asian Bachelorette. Um, she is going to be the lead of the upcoming Bachelorette season. Her name is Jen. She is so cute. She was on this past season of The Bachelor, which I kind of watched on and off. It was a good uh, season, but The Bachelor has kind of been losing me over the years. I just feel like it's just not innovative enough. They aren't changing it up enough as far as like the format and stuff of the show so I just don't find this interesting as I used to um but I am happy that they are still making strides towards diversity um and inclusion even though the way that she became the bachelorette was kind of weird and questionable yeah. and the show made her look kind of bad a win is a win I'm gonna just celebrate the fact that she is the first first Asian American um uh, bachelorette and I think it's gonna be a really cute season I'm definitely definitely gonna tune in to her season to support because the you know the racists love to be loud and wrong and they've definitely been very loud and obnoxious when it came to a lot of things this season and in, including this announcement and I'm not saying that you're racist necessarily if you wanted somebody else to be the bachelorette over her but you are racist if you're like in her comment saying shitty things to her because she's the bachelorette and your fave not that's where that's the line that you crossing that's all I'm saying you can be unhappy with the choice but it should have nothing to do with 
her ethnicity. <laughs> and you certainly shouldn't be giving her any hate for it. What is she supposed to do? Turn it down and beg your faves to do it? People are weird. I hate the internet. So weird. <laughs> I really hate the internet. So weird. Like, that's not her choice. And then, like you said, like, well, why would she turn it down? She was on The Bachelor. Obviously, she had some ambitions to be on TV some type of way. Exactly. I don't know, it's, folks are weird. Folks but, are yeah. so weird. But, but yeah, also, definitely this is the uh, audience that they kind of build by waiting until 2024 to be more inclusive. It's not kind of. They absolutely did build it. <laughs> this is their... This is, that's Absolutely, people. their people that they have curated. Um, because I mean, what do you expect to happen when you give them season after season of white lead, white lead, white lead, super white cast with a couple people of color sprinkled in there mm -hmm. every now and then, and then you give them a black bachelorette? Obviously, the black bachelorette is gonna get yeah. hate. Then you give them a black bachelor. Obviously, he's gonna get hey. Then forever and ever, every time somebody that's not white is chosen, everybody is accusing them of being a diversity hire. Because of y'all. So the producers of The Bachelorette absolutely did this. Which is another reason I'm kind of over the franchise. But I am going to support Jen. Because she deserves to be supported. But I can't stand yeah. them. I can't stand them. Yeah. Best of luck to her. Best of luck. Best of luck. But Hopefully yeah, y'all. Pick some decent guys. Uh, on that note. <laughs> let's just move on. <laughs> we're going to take a quick break. And we will be right back to uh, wrap up the show. All right, y'all. So we are back. And as far as the planner world right now, I mean, obviously, everybody's talking about Go Wild. And I know some other conferences have made announcements. I know um, SGS has started the ticket sales for their conference. I think the ticket sales for the Chicago Planner Conference is coming very soon. This is a great year to go to a planner conference because you have mm -hmm. so many options. If you can't make it to Go Wild, you have so many options all over the map um, mm -hmm. to choose from. Um, but the main thing is the EC Life Planner lunch is coming up this month. Uh, and we already got a few sneak peeks on their Instagram page. We did. Yeah, we did. And it's cute. Um, I like it. I think it's going to be a really, really cute uh, Life Planner rollout. What I will say, I wish they would have changed it up a little bit more from last year. It's very similar. Like the Evolve collection is another Eda V collab. Y'all know we stand Eda V. Obviously, it's beautiful, colorful, all the things. They have the bold blooms, which is, you know, their this year's iteration of like florals, which is really pretty. It looks kind of like watercolor painted florals or whatever. Um, and then they have the canvas collection from last year, which is really good, very basic, neutral. Um, so I think it's perfect. I don't know. I guess I wouldn't have changed any of those. Maybe just added a fourth one that was like an extra special, special like exclusive for this year. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, that would have been nice to see, but you know, these yeah. are three good collections too. Yeah, I feel that because it's kind of the um, you know, the appeal of the EC launch is that, oh, you're going to get a new design for, yeah. you know, your new year. Um, I will say uh I don't know. I, I'm thinking maybe it wasn't as different this year because they did make a lot of changes and are offering a lot more in different sizes this year. So there's going to be some true. changes to like the Daily Duo. Um, I think they're changing up like the the monthly or currently page or whatever it's called. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. I know the Daily Duo is getting instead of just that note page is going to be like a full blown weekly overview page well you know now you can just make it into a weekly overview page um this is actually gonna have it like an official weekly overview page so that's, um, that's neat yeah and plus still notes pages mm -hmm. too i think they said they're gonna have two instead of one so i'm, I'm okay. guessing there will be like the weekly page in the notes yeah and then also no um that little small calendar on every page mm -hmm. girl that has been that's controversial <laughs> <laughs> as if y'all weren't gonna put a sticker over anyway but that anyhow has been um, a lot they're also gonna start um 
the compact vertical is available going to be available in a seven by nine, which which defeats the purpose of the not really compact team. anymore. Yeah. But I, I get that but a yeah. lot of people really you like that, it. Yeah. that layout and they want it in a bigger size. So you know, EC is the people's planner company, and what they're yeah. gonna do is listen to the feedback and get the people what they're asking for. Um, I also saw they have a couple of new like coils that they're gonna roll mm -hmm. out. They have some agenda covers they're gonna roll out. Lots of new uh, covers and stuff. So. It's a it's an exciting lunch. It's a very very exciting lunch. Yeah, it makes me wonder with the kind of very similar themes is that maybe they focus more on the changes to the actual planner this year versus like coming mm -hmm. up with very you know drastic new designs. Yeah, which I mean I guess that's a a fair trade off. Um, so yeah, I, I'll be interested to see. Hopefully they have some examples at at Wild because I don't know if I want to um purchase anything new right now i did pick up some yeah. notebooks since they had a sale recently that so. is what the streets are saying the streets are saying that at go wow you will be able to possibly see some of the new planners and stuff yeah i am excited about this lunch um and excited to see these planners in person um hopefully really soon so i think it's gonna be good you know lunch season is always very exciting so i'm mm. excited i'm excited for yeah. sure, yeah. yeah, yeah, we'll see. Uh, Lisa said, Uh, I hope so because when you see plum paper out here doing all kinds of layouts in all sizes and EC is do still doing the same, they trying to switch it up, they trying <laughs> to switch it up, okay? Yeah, I feel like this year, <laughs> um, I wish they would have said that, mm -hmm. you know, in the like promotional and the IG, like, hey, we really wanted to incorporate you in this plan i think that could have been a really good angle like we heard what y'all said yeah but i feel like i mean and it could be in some of the captions or yeah something, but i feel like Maybe more the coming. emphasis was on just the new designs which isn't really new yeah uh, on the ig the only thing that is out as of the day we're recording this is april 7th is mainly um the new uh the new layouts but I, not the new mm -hmm. layouts but like the new designs but like yeah and one of them you can kind of see like i think it's just in a notebook actually yeah they got some note they got some new yeah, guided new journals yeah. and notebooks and stuff also that are already out um so yeah and i know i think more is coming i think that would be a good angle to mm -hmm. make it like we heard y'all <laughs> here you go here you go so yeah because it wouldn't be it. so focused on like this look exactly like last year's but you mm -hmm. know this is why we need a consultant business but they no Crystal said, I only want one thing. EC needs an unpunched option for the disc girls. I know that's not their demographic, but it would be nice. I mean, that it's right nice. there because they're mm -hmm. printing and punching all their own planners. So all they need is a, or I guess, no, I guess you won't like completely unpunched so you can punch it yourself. I think it's right there for them to do that. Um, definitely give them that feedback and you just never know what's going to happen. Yeah, I mean it's it's possible because clearly they're making the changes that the girls have been asking for. Mm -hmm. So I mean it's yeah. one less thing to do, but also it's probably one more thing they have to train their people on to make sure that they're, you know, reading if it's punched or not. Right. So yeah, definitely give them the feedback because clearly they listen. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, y'all. That is it for this week's episode. I am so excited to see y'all at Go Wild um, and to do the live podcast and everything. And, you know, we have some exciting stuff coming. April is going to be a very good, very busy month. And we're just excited for things to come. Yeah, yeah. April is about to be crazy. So, mm -hmm. yeah, make sure y'all stay tuned. Uh, follow us, Instagram, YouTube. All the stuff is every... Um, it's at everywhere it is at planners and wine. Period. So follow us there. Uh, so you can yep. be in the know, check out the Patreon and um, yeah, we'll see y'all at go wild or we'll see y'all in the next episode. Yeah. Bye y'all. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>